Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm joined with one of my good friends here, Emmy Simpson, a partner in crime with our Yankee services that we <laughs> offer together. Uh, we should copyright that, Yankee. Uh, <laughs> That was a slip up. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, that was a slip up I made a while ago because obviously Emmy is a Reiki healer and I'm a yoga teacher and we do teach a combined course online with yoga and Reiki. And so we're just going to make it Yankee, like a celebrity power couple, Yankee. Um, <laughs> so I'm so excited though. Today is going to a video that we, we put together because we now, Emmy, we are a week away from the 60 day shadow work challenge. So today is January, Saturday, January 14th, Saturday. So um, the we, the 60 day challenge starts and my words are getting twisted because it's Mercury retrograde, but it's January 21st, mm -hmm. Saturday, January 21st is the start of the 60 day shadow work challenge. But before we get into that, before we get into that, guys, I want to go ahead and remind you guys that if you have not subscribed to Emmy's channel, Holistic Genie with Emmy, I told her, I pulled her channel up and look guys, 1.1, that's an 11. Like that's such a, a God number, a, such a powerful number. And so if you have not subscribed to Emmy's channel, of course, it's going to be down in the description box below. Um, also, before we get into it and why we ha why I have the shared screen up, during the 60-day challenge, we are going to be doing a, um, a book club. And Emmy and Nicole are going to be running the signal group and are going to be kind of taking care of that um, discussion with the book club. But I wanted to go ahead just to get the administra administration stuff out of the way. The first book of the first month or the first 30 days is going to be Polishing the Mirror. Both books by Ram Dass this is one of my favorite books. I think this was the first book of Ram Dass's that I ever read. Um, that's going to be the first book. And the second book is actually recommended by Emmy. And this is going to be Walking Each Other Home, Conversations on Loving and Dying, which kind of goes into uh, one of what, what Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Shanti and Catherine Edwards all helped me create the 60 Day Challenge template. And um, it took a lot to do it. And Emmy wrote a beautiful portion of it based on the practice of grief and moving through Grief, which is something I don't think any human being can escape, is grief. And so I know that this work is going to be very important. So I will put the links to these two books down in the description box below, guys. So um, if you want to go ahead and order them to join the uh, the Shadow Work Challenge, the book group uh, with Emmy and Nicole as we go through this really, really, really intense work that we're about to get into. So while Emmy is uh, doing what she's doing, let's go ahead and look here. I'll go ahead and share the beginning part. Now, as I told the group this morning on Signal, um, if so yesterday, Friday, if you had emailed me on the Shadow Work Challenge email, which is shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com, again, that will be in the description box below. If you had emailed me prior to yesterday, which was January, Friday the 13th, um, that email, I had to clean out the email uh, box because I needed to keep myself organized. So go ahead and re-email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com. I'm just going to go ahead and read you guys the opening letter to the Shadow Work Challenge just so you guys kind of know what to expect. Dearest challengers, for the next 60 days, Esoteric Atlanta and friends will be hosting a global Shadow Work Challenge. This challenge will last 60 days and each day will hold a few activities for you to do to help you in your journey of healing and self-discovery. I'm so excited that you've decided to do this. Please know that of all these activities, that of all that all of these activities are for you and your experience only. No one will be watching you, judging you, or reading any of your journal entries. This is simply a private exper experience for you and you alone. Of course, you will be able to win prizes if you if you sign up for it. Your name will go into a raffle at the end of the 60 days. It is recommended that you ex the exercise portion of the daily challenge be done first thing in the morning before breakfast and before the start of your day, but it is not doable. For now, you can do the exercise at whatever time of day that works best for you. Please note that this challenge is merely a template of what you can do to jumpstart your shadow work. With that being said, if it, this is super important, guys, because this is how I am. If I have that personality, I'm Vata, I'm Vata Pitta. If I don't get everything done, I think I've failed. And that in itself is your own shadow work, right? So if you don't get everything done in one day, don't give up. It's okay, all right? 
Um, if, so that being said, if a day passes and you don't get in all the activities, don't stress. You just start again the next day, picking up where you left off. Don't stop because you had one bad day. You're human and humans are resilient. Now for ladies, if you are on your cycle, I have given like a, a very low impact stretching class here. You can do in exchange for the exercises provided on your period, or you can do the exercises provided. It's up to you. So if you need a daily warm up before your uh, daily exercises, a link to Bryce's sun salutations and hip opening stretches are available during the daily challenge. I have links to those to help you warm up. Please note if you have lower back issues, hip opening stretches will help. Please try to do them before you proceed with your daily workouts. Uh, for pregnancy, please be mindful. Depending on where you are in your pregnancy, you might want to do only the bar exercises, replacing them with more cardio exercises on the other days. Totally up to you. Everybody's pregnancy is different. So do not feel if you are doing this challenge and you are pregnant, do not feel beholden to all the exercises. Don't feel beholden to all the exercises anyway, but especially if you're pre you're pregnant. What you will need for the challenge is the internet, a journal, and castor oil if you wish to participate in Friday night oil baths. There is one video that I'm providing that has optional of two to three pound hen weights. Please note this particular video can be done without weights. You can obviously do the exercises without hand weights and still have resistance of your own body weight. Or you can substitute them with soup cans or water bottles or as someone said once wine bottles, which may be the best resistance ever because you're really going to be gripping those suckers so you don't drop them and break red wine all over your carpet. So find the resistance that works best for you. Um, you might want to take a photo, a uh, before photo on day one of the challenge and then an after photo on the final day of the challenge so you can see how your body changed during the 60 days for your eyes only. This is only optional. Now, I personally advise against weighing. Weighing can cause an addiction to the numbers. The numbers are just numbers. They do not define. So I'm going to reiterate this. The numbers on the scale do not define the internal and the emotional work being done. Okay, some people can weigh themselves and they can still have that separation where if you are somebody who is prone to having disordered eating or if you have a weird relationship with food, I want you to be very vigilant with this and cut yourself some slack. I have not weighed myself since I was 27 years old. Um, I only weigh myself now if I have to at the doctor or for medical purposes. I just don't do it. Um, my, my mother had some issues with that when I was a child and so I am aware that that can be an inherited karma. And so I have made that precaution for myself. Um, but this is always up to you. Very important. If the trauma work becomes too overwhelming in this challenge, please reach out for help. Again, this is just meant to be something for you to jumpstart your own personal work. If it becomes a lot, please reach out to a trusted therapist or a healer like Emmy to help you navigate. Okay, I really want to and we can talk more about this with the Artful Dodger, all that kind of stuff. I really want to tell you guys, there's going to be a lot of deep work. We're going to be talking about a lot of really heavy topics over the 60 days. And you're going to be doing this virtually. I mean, you have the Signal Support Group. You can always reach out to all of us who are sponsoring this challenge. But I, I know people, I have funny feelings about therapists. I loved my trauma therapist. Emmy is an incredible healer, too. If you feel like this work is becoming a lot and you're feeling overwhelmed, please reach out to someone for help. Help. There's no shame in getting help. No shame. All right. Now, when I send this, if you have any issues pulling up the links, just copy and paste the links to the YouTube for all the exercises and stuff. Um, here is a link to the book club. Uh, for the Signal Book Club, as well as the, the, the books I just showed you guys. Uh, there will also be an optional fast towards the end of this challenge. This fast is going to be run by Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa, and this is optional. If fasting is not for you, a cleanse will also be provided. Again, this is optional. Please keep your health a priority if you are prone to, again, disordered eating, like starving yourself. It is advised that you do not or binge eating any 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 if fasting is going to trigger an unhealthy response to your relationship with food then do not do it okay that is my advice as a professional is is the fast is only going to work if it actually helps you with your trigger and does not intensify your triggers if that makes sense and we can talk more about that emmy because i know that you you have some experience with this too please note that fasting or cleansing is not a weight not for weight loss nor should ever be used for weight loss okay 
There's also going to be a 21 sun salutation challenge within the 60 day challenge that will be starting on February 27th. This challenge is not listed in this in this template. Um, Shanti has, has a separate template for that. When we get closer to February 27th, which is quite a ways away from now, um, we will send out the template for those who want to do the sun salutation challenge. You can do the sun salutation sun salutation challenge on top of the exercises provided in the template but that is only up to you and your level of physical fitness okay and um yeah so here's a link to the signal support group here's all the participating challenges and um and yeah so and here's the uh, link to the last some tips from our last challenge if you need some help along the journey and of course we have lots of fun stuff that we are going to be presenting in this challenge. I'm almost done correcting all the edits and so that should be available to go out to you guys tonight. Uh, one thing people have asked me, just getting through the administrative stuff before we get to the topic at, at hand, I think a lot of people think that I'm just gonna email it out to people who participated in the 30 day challenge, no, you're gonna have to contact me. Um, don't send me people's email addresses for me to then send to other people. Um, I honestly, guys, we already have close to 200 emails sitting in the Shadow Work Challenge Gmail account from yesterday, from my announcement yesterday. Our last 30-day challenge had over 600 people. I'm expecting to get between 600 and 1,000 people for this challenge. And so if people were just to send me a bunch of emails, I that's just a lot. That's chaos. So, um, so it's just easier for me to keep everything organized and make sure everybody gets what they need by you reaching out to the email so I can just send it out. Um, also, as I said in the group this morning, if you are emailing the shadow work challenge at gmail.com, don't ask me a bunch of questions. I'm not going to be able to respond right now. Okay. It takes a lot to send these, a lot of time to send, because I have to go through each individual email to send the template out. And I don't mind doing it, but I'm not going to have the time right now to sit and answer a bunch of questions. And so what I'm thinking we can do later on in the challenge is actually have you guys uh, go through those questions and answer them on a show. So, or you can send me a separate uh, comment under a video if you have a question, but right now I just can't. It's, it's already going to take the full week for me to get all these templates out. So I can't, um, I, unfortunately, I'm only one person. I don't have an assistant. I wish I had an assistant. I got to train my dog how to do this. Um, <laughs> so, so I hope you guys understand. I just, at this moment, my most important thing is making sure everybody gets what they need to start. So, all right. Now that the housekeeping is done and over with, how are you today, Emmy? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I am so, so ready for this retrograde to be over. And even though it goes direct next week or this this coming week, Wednesday, I believe, there's still a, um, a post-shadow phase. And since this retrograde was so intense, I, I imagine that the post-shadow phase is is still going to be affecting us a little bit so i am like waiting for february man it can't come soon enough <laughs> oh my word i mean emmy and i have both been on our own journey of of shadow work and self-healing long before we opened up our youtube channels where we weren't public public figures and we have i mean we have been like crying to each other this week haven't we i want everybody to feel better about themselves you know it's it, no matter how humaning being a human being is is one of the most challenging experiences you will ever go through that your soul decides to put you through and um and and no matter how deep you are into your work your perspective on the work changes as you get more and more experienced you understand it more but it doesn't take away the human emotion it doesn't take it take away the struggle and so um i want to make that very clear if you're embarking on shadow, there's no finish line there's no finish line it's just you getting the opportunity to sit to sit in the shit, basically, and understand that you're not the shit, but you have to sit in it first before you understand it. So, yes. Yeah. But it's been a rough one, Emmy, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And should I should I go in and talk about the artful dodger and the ego and how crafty it gets? Yes, because that I do. Okay. So, Emmy, in your words, and I'm actually going to put you on the screen. In your words, will you just explain to our? Because you do my the, this retrograde is messing with my words. You do such an eloquent job describing things and teaching things. Can you explain to the viewers right now what the when we say the artful dodger? What is that? First of all, okay. So the artful dodger is the ego, and the ego is an illusion. It is the 
story that we create of ourselves. And Aaron Abke says that the ego is the act of identifying. We're identified with um, our bodies. We're identified with our emotions. We're identified with the hurts and pains that other, other people have caused us. We're identified with this story character and all that that entails. Who we really are is Christ consciousness and that alone. We are all the Christ and we are at different stages of remembering who we are. And the ego will constantly try to come in and, and help us to reattach to the story because that is the only way that the ego stays alive. I had an experience that really opened my eyes recently. Um, many of you know, I, I have a part-time nanny job and um, I have been wanting to let this job go for over a year, but I stayed because of um, certain situations. Um, I'm not gonna get into details, but I, but I, I decided to stay. Well, we're at a point now where it would be um, easier for me to leave this job. And I have, many of you know, I have had struggles with um, building and publishing my website. I have also, I have put this off. I've dodged this for over a year. And the timing of when I wanted to leave my job and build my website is is the same and and i didn't i didn't realize that there was a huge energetic cord and that my website was symbolic it was symbolic of my growth into working for myself instead of working for someone else it was symbolic in forward progress and forward movement and the energetic tie that i have to working for someone else was preventing me from moving forward with this. When I realized that, I had a moment of extreme emotion and I was just, I was just like completely bulldozed over by this realization that, oh my gosh, I, I am literally hanging on to the cord that is preventing me from moving forward. And so I did it. I faced my fear. I took the leap. I um, talked to the both the parents and this family. I told them what was going on because I'm doing so much. I have so much on my plate. It's starting to affect my mental and physical health. Um, and I need to let something go. And the only thing that I can logically let go right now is my nanny job. And so I did it. I mean, I'm, I'm still there. I'm going to be there for another month or so ago until the person that replaces me is, um, is able to take over. But the cord was cut, the tie was cut. And almost immediately, I had this um, urge and this like desire to work on my website. And you guys, I hate technology. I hate it. I have so little time that the thought of having to wrap my mind around learning something new, especially technology, pisses me right off. It's like, I don't have the freaking time for this shit. I just don't, but I don't have the money to outsource it yet. You know, that's the, that's, that's the transition. That's part of the transition of work going from working for someone else to working for yourself. You have all of these little things that you have to work through and go through. And part of that journey is working 24 seven because you still have to do everything with your house. You can't hire out a nanny. You can't hire out housework. You got to pay for that or you got to do that stuff yourself because you can't pay someone else to do it because you're not bringing in that that income to be able to afford that. So I do all the cleaning, I do all the cooking, all the errands, all the grocery shopping, all of the homeschooling, all of the stuff with my business, all the stuff with my YouTube channel. Like I do everything. And, and I've added Ashtanga on top of it. And it's just... Your soul was like, hold my beer. <laughs> hold my beer. <laughs> 
So the fact that I had this desire to work on my website was indicative of the release of that that energetic tie. And I was so excited. I was so excited. And I had this past Thursday, I had cleared my schedule. I was planning on taking the entire day and working on pieces that I'm writing on to put on my website and uploading all of um, pictures of all of my um, certifications from my all my classes and um, just, you know, all these different things. I had all these creative ideas flowing. And this was the first time that this this was that it wasn't a a fight to get myself to do anything with it. And I was so excited about it. Well, Wednesday night, I was triggered. I was triggered so badly that it caused a CPTSD episode. My body went into full fight or flight mode. My blood pressure was 151 over 97 and my resting heart rate was 98. Like my body was in the thick of it and there is nothing I can do to stop that once it started. I just have to wait it out. And, you know, there are certain things that that I learned to do over the years when I was triggered to calm my nervous system down so I can get the process. I shortened the process to about two or three days. It used to be like a week or more um, that I that I would have to take to recover. Um, and I realized yesterday in talking with someone about this that. Holy shit. That was my freaking ego because what I was triggered over was a nothing burger. It was literally a nothing burger. So can we pause on this for one second? Because I want to kind of explain what she's saying. I want to, I want us to, to pull this apart even more. Cause I see this a lot in the uh, spiritual world as the real, you know, real spirituality is not rainbows and butterflies. Real spirituality is like <laughs> cow shit and, cobwebs and haunted forest like it's not you know you don't get to the rainbows and butterflies until you've made your way through and you can't go around the forest you got to go through it you know you got to clean the muck off of you so i was telling emmy this morning um i was take i took a, a bar class this morning and um in the middle of the bar class marnie alton whom i love said uh said something and she and she says really poignant things a lot like I can tell she's really worked on herself because she's obviously made these real these self-realizations and then she shares them in her teaching she says and I actually took a bill a bill I'm gonna try to hide my address here a bill and I wrote it down in a sharpie in the middle of the head it's not the nicest handwriting so I was like I have to pause this and write this down because we see this so much and this is what Emmy is explaining we see this a lot in the healing arts if you've come this far and you're on the precipice of change don't go back from where you came from. And the reason why that hit me so hard, it's what Emmy is saying. This is what when we think about when we first walk into spirituality. Sometimes I think we don't understand what the ego is. We think the ego, we think of like narcissism. We think of the jock. We think of like the big personalities. That's not what ego is. That's one flavor of an ego but the ego can also be the quiet guy in the corner that's wearing a bunch of mala beads the ego can also be a cptsd symptom that's been triggered by the ego and what 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 do i mean by this so when we come into healing practices or our shadow work we want the change we know something is wrong and so we want to go on this path to to make the change but what starts to happen is when change starts to happen good or bad it's just change we tend to go oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit and we run back to where it was awful because where we came from because we know that's that's the awful we know we're comfortable with that awful that's it's the, the old pair of slippers it's the yep. old pair of slippers it's where we've been so we know it even though we might hate it mm -hmm. we know it it's predictable and the ego when, when it's things are predictable the false sense of self can thrive but if we're, we're coming into this precipice of change and that change happens and we're not sure we emmy doesn't know what's going to happen once her website is built she knows her soul is calling for her to do this but this soul it's you know we have soul contracts but it's not like you're born and god comes down like here's your contract here's an outline 
No, we, we, we were having to, and that's part of the journey is, is facing the unexpected and going into the unknown. But the ego knows that if you're relying solely on your faith, solely on what your intuition is, to, your intuition is not your ego, right? Your gut feeling is not your ego. That's your soul's voice. That's God's voice. So the ego goes, oh, hell no. I'm going to start pressing these because the ego controls the mind, right? It, it controls the survival. And so it goes, I'm going to start pressing these buttons that I know this person has. So I have caught both Emmy and I both have CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And she's right. When you do have a CPTSD episode, you can't just go for a five minute walk and be fine. Mm -hmm. Like your body starts to shut down. You, I start shaking uncontrollably. I can't focus on anything. Sometimes I have to be held. I have a weight blanket. And so the, sometimes the ego the ego is that crafty that where it will sli slyly come in and go, oh, yeah, you think you're going to do something that's going to not require me? Boop. Mm -hmm. How about now? That's what Emmy's talking about. And this is, and I, and I said, Emmy and I were talking about before we, we came on, the, the more you go down this path of understanding your own false sense of self, the craftier yes. it has to get. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I wanted to shift blame. I wanted to place the blame on my husband because he triggered me. And, and when I say it was a nothing burger, he said one thing and he, five minutes later, he apologized for it. But I was already off and running. My ego took that because because I wasn't aware of it. I And that's how sneaky it gets. I've been in and out of recovery programs for 22 years. So I've been familiar with shadow work for a very long time. And I've been familiar with ego and the way it works and how it comes into play for a very long time. And it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this work, it will find another way. And then you have to come to that realization and, and move a little bit farther. And then it will find another way and you have to come. There is never going to be an end to your shadow work. As long as you're in a human body, you're going to have to be dealing with ego. It's just what it is. There, you're never going to be done. You don't reach a space where, ta-da! My ego's gone. I'm no, good. it's gone. No, it's just going to get your ego from the in the beginning of your journey is very noticeable, and you start to understand that. Oh, so my ego is literally so literally in a very basic sense. Your ego is who you are. You know, Bryce, Emmy. That's the false sense of self. That's the 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 hologram that your soul has created. The Shakti and the Shiva, as we talked talk about with Cindy, for the soul to know itself. It's the tango, right? Um, and the ego, then of course comes into the nervous system, the pain. That's why pain is real because we're using that. We're using the ego and that resistance of the ego to trigger the friction needed. But as again, as, as, so at the very beginning, you, you kind of go through that, oh my God, that crumbling of reality. Well, oh, I'm not really Bryce. I'm not really this person. I'm, well, then who am I? And then it's almost like the ego becomes a sniper for the special forces unit you, because all of a sudden you've become, you've upgraded. So now that the ego's, your opponent is going to have to upgrade too. Right. And so it, it is, it does get very, very tricky. That's where spirit, spiritual egos, the ego dresses up. Can we explain that too? I mean, what's a spiritual ego? What's the character the ego takes when uh, we go into the realm of spiritual ego, spiritually artfully dodging? Mm -hmm. um, so when we come into the, the spiritual community and we're exposed to these different ideas of being, um, and this is just one example, of being a light worker or a star seed. And a lot of times light workers and star seeds have had really rough lives. We have been beaten down, we have been belittled, we have been abused, we have been in situations where we have been powerless, continuously powerless. And so we come into a spiritual community and we start finding people that we resonate with and um these labels that are going around like light worker and star seed and um it can be very um very attractive to 
trying to find out who you are. Yeah. And we can almost, um, and, th- and this is where spiritual ego comes in. It's like, oh, I've been this nothing my whole life. Well, I'm actually something. I'm actually somebody. Oh, well, you know, I'm a light worker. I'm a star seed. And then if you, if, if, you know, I, I've seen people um, put so much emphasis on this, on titles like that, um, that they're presenting themselves as some type of, um, see, I don't want to step on any toes because this is such a touchy, touchy subject. Well, I, I see you what know? you're so like, so like you can be, I know that both Emmy and I, most of us watching our star seeds, most of us watching our light workers, like this is part of what our soul decided to do. But when you solely identify as that and it, and it gives mm-hmm. you power, you feel power over others. Then that's another, that's another trick of the ego, right? That's another trick of the ego. And so you have to, there's, there's a way to, to be these things without also being these things at the same time. I'm going to bring what you just said, um, triggered a memory. I'm going to bring something that I said earlier back into the statement again. Aaron Abke says that the ego is the act of identifying. So, you know, we're identified as these people who, before we came to the spiritual community, people who were oppressed and and abused, we identified that that's our story. Well, we come into the spiritual community. Well, now I'm a light worker. I'm identifying as a light worker. I'm identifying as a star seed. I am this, this is who I am. That's ego. That's spiritual ego. The act of identifying with anything other than the Christ you are the Christ. Everyone is the Christ. We are all fractals of God. No one is better or worse or be- less than anyone else. It's just where we're at in our remembering yeah. and embodying that remembering. Um, and that's why, that's why, I mean, I, I, you know, we talk a lot off, off phone about like past life existence and some stuff, and you can have a deep respect for your past lives because there was a lesson to be learned but that's why I also, especially for people who are new to spirituality, I don't, as a, as an Ashtanga teacher, I don't even want them like looking at that because it's just another label. It's just another label. And it's just, it was just another experience that your, your soul decided to do for it to know itself. And that's why I love in the yoga world. It's like the whole point of yoga is finding the nothing. Ram Das has, has a, a documentary and it's a series talk where he talks about trying to be nobody. We, and he's, he says in the talk, like, we spend our whole lives trying to be somebody, be mm-hmm. the best lawyer, be the best attorney, be the best yoga teacher, be the best Reiki healer, be the best this, the best, best that. Well, what if you try to be nobody? What if you use these things, use the shadow work, use the experience as a very personal thing to be nobody? And I know that that sounds for someone who's new to spirituality, that might sound depressing, but to me, that sounds actually liberating. Because yeah, when you're, yeah, when you go back to the soul, you have no bondage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very freeing. It's, it's very freeing when you can let go of all the labels you're attached to. You know, I was very much attached to the label of victim. I played victim very, very well, very, very well. You know, I, I, um, endured stuff in my childhood that created this, um, created this attachment of trauma bonding in my nervous system. And from then on, I attracted those types of people in friendships, in partnerships, um, in work collaboration, I attracted the energy signature I was putting out and It's just so freeing when you can let go of the identity. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim at all. I am, I am a fractal of God, like everyone else on this planet living out the story of Emmy. That's it. And and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, learn about myself through this filter. I'm just a filter. This oh, that's a beautiful way to say it. Yeah. And that's why that's one thing that bothers me about a little bit about our community, our quote unquote truth or community is that we're so attached to the story of this timeline. 
And true spirituality will tell you that being happy and being at peace is you internally being at peace despite what's happening outside of you. So I've said it before, what if you found out that nothing was going to change for another 10 years? Are you at peace with that? Because if you're not, then there's where your work lies. Is how do you find that peace within you when everything else is so chaotic outside of you? And are you looking for... That's one thing that I blame a lot with the church and a lot of religions is that it's giving you an external, your salvation, quote unquote, your peace is only giving to, given to you from something outside of yourself, which actually that's not what Yahshua taught anyway. Yahshua, Yahshua did not teach that. He taught you that heaven was inside of you and mm -hmm. so was hell. They both were equally inside of you. So... When we look, you know, and I, I know I said this to you, Emmy, like one realization I had like a couple weeks ago was, are we replacing Jesus with the white hats mm. to bring us salvation? Because if you're waiting for, and I know this is going to make a lot, probably going to get a lot more death deaths from this, from this video, but oh well. <laughs> um, if you're waiting for somebody outside of you, to bring you what you think will fulfill you, then you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life. It's no different. What do they call? What do they call drug addicts? They're chasing the dragon. You're going to be chasing the dragon for the rest of your life because nothing outside of you is ever going to heal you. You have to heal yourself, and you do that by leaning into the dancing in the shadows, looking, taking a long, hard look at yourself. And that ego is going to artfully dodge and it's going to try to fight you at every, 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 every step of this journey. There's, it's going to be, it's very crafty. It's very sneaky. Um, and, and, but, but in saying that there's your resistance. If Emmy had not had the situation that she had this week, she would she she learned more about herself in that process when she realized what was going on. So in that way, thank you, ego. Thank you for showing me something else about myself. And yes, as we were saying, the ego can cause all sorts of physical limitations, all sorts of physical reactions in order to stop you. You know, I see the art. Yeah, we were laughing earlier this week. I totally my my spiritual I my my artful dodger, my ego got real crafty this week. In a different way from Emmy, where I got up in the morning and I, as I say, I kind of piddle around for a little bit before I get on my mat. And I had uh, the show Special Forces on because it's all these celebrities doing this marine military type training. And I started watching it. And the whole time, my ego was like, look at that shadow work. Man, I want to do what they're doing. This is incredible. And my fucking mat was sitting right there waiting for me. And all of a sudden, I realized the time. And I was like, well, holy shit. I have to now go take a shower because I have a show with Shanti soon. Like, and my map. So my, my artful dodger was like, we're going to watch other people getting their asses <laughs> kicked and see what's coming up for them. And we're going to remark on how great they are and how we want to do this ourselves instead of actually getting on the fucking mat and doing it. And as you know, today, guys, like when Emmy and I were kids, like, the TV show came on when it came on. And if you weren't home to record it on a VHS, you missed it. But that's not true today. I could have watched that episode after I was done practicing. Mm -hmm. But my my artful dodger was like, no, we're going to watch it at five o'clock in the morning. Because that's when you should, because that's when everybody watches TV, right? You know, <laughs> and ignore the fact that your, your yoga mat is literally sitting right there waiting for you to do your own. So you're going to remark on how you want to do this. And I find this a lot too. Like people will, will do that. They will, you know, how many times have people joined a yoga shala or gone to a Reiki person and then they back out because they, their intention, their ego is like, let's do this. We're going to do this. And then all of a sudden let's not do it. It's the, it's a bypassing. Right. And so with that, come with that being said, I, you know, for you guys doing the 60 day challenge, knowledge is power. 
knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. The only person that's really going to be able to calm the beast of your ego is you, right? And so if you're, but if you're not aware of what that looks like, then it's going to get, it's going to have, if you're not aware of what it looks like, it's going to have an easy job. But if you make it hard for it, make that ego work for it, like make it like, and then you challenge it and you, you know, and we see it a lot. I see it a lot with injury and I wanted to cover this as well. Um, cause I, I've gotten some more questions about injury and I'm not saying that you don't have to, that you don't modify. Yes. If you've injured yourself, absolutely. You're going to be modifying in your exercise. Okay. I'm not saying that you're going to break your ankle and then go run a marathon. That's ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of times people will use injury as the artful dodger will come in and say, oh, well, we sprained our ankle, so we're not going to do anything for a while. No, well, your arms are still okay. You can do arm stuff, weight stuff. I use, that. I use that when I first started a few months ago with Ashtanga. I was like, oh, you know what? I've had major abdominal surgery. There's a lot of ab work in Ashtanga. I shouldn't be doing this. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. I just got, I just got myself some compression tank tops. So I have like a built in belly brace and I'm fine. Yeah. You I'm even asked me, I was like, oh, people wear braces all the time. They're well, they, they wear knee braces. They wear, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, but of course, like, so Emmy, because she's had those issues, if she were my student in Atlanta, like if she were coming to the Shala, I would want to know those things because that informs how I teach her. So obviously I'm not going I'm going to be aware that there's a, there is a gross body a physical body weakness because of and, and there's probably going to be emotional stuff come up from it too because that's all traumatic. You know anytime your body gets hacked open that's a trauma. You know? Um and so it's it's you know I mean we had a, a, co a conversation uh, off camera this week about kundalini and I've told you guys that my back, my back bending, I've punched a teacher coming out of a back bend. It's been, you know, when before I started Ashtanga, when I was doing the fake yoga, they would, because I'd had back surgery, they would tell me not to do back bending. But when I got into Ashtanga and I said, oh, I've had back surgery, they were like, oh, then more back bending. That's where we focus with you. And I was like, fuck, you know, <laughs> I punched a teacher and all this. But that's where I've had the sensation of Kundalini is in deep back bending. So, these these issues that you have in your body your first of all your body is is made to change and so nobody is ever going to go through life or any type of exercise program without experiencing some sort of injury but the way we see it in ashtanga yoga is that injury trauma is a teacher it's not a bad thing now again we don't want to be reckless in our practice but we also want to be like okay so I keep hurting my ankle in this practice. What is that telling me? What do I need to learn? What is what is my psyche trying to tell me? Let me let me investigate this more. You know, David Greig has a beautiful video about it where he talks about like there is karmic, there is karma stuff that's going to have to come up, and that might result in you having a shoulder injury for a little bit because there's a karmic issue there right that you need to look at and karma is not nothing to fear it's just cause and effect it's just your work it's what you signed up for it's your lesson your body in your body will not lie what what prompted me to look at my ego with the ptsd trigger is some muscle issues around my right hip well the hip is all about moving forward and and forward mo movement and it's it, it's your foundation it's your it's where you're going and the right side is masculine technology is masculine it's like holy freaking shit are you kidding me like my ego just ripped me right the f out like yeah. i am blown away at how this this happened and how this works it's just like Wow. Because the body doesn't lie, you guys. We no. can do ourselves all we want, but the body's never gonna lie. And so if you're so let's say like you have you're someone who's constantly dealing with knee issues. Well, have you looked into what knee is issues mean spiritually? What is your body trying to communicate with you? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That might be where you're going to grow the most, where that friction, that spark of light happens. So if you end up having an injury and you find yourself trying to send me an excuse or send me an email as to why you can't do something because you stumped your big toe, is that you, your soul, sending that email or giving that excuse or is that you giving into the artful dodger? 
that's for you to decide. You know, yeah, if you and, and the level of self honesty. I mean, you you can you can convince other people of of things. You can be honest with other people, but when you have to get to this level of honesty with yourself, it is it is really it really perpetuates your growth when you can be honest with yourself because you could get away with a lot of stuff but when you it comes to being honest with yourself about things it's like you stop <laughs> enabling yourself you yeah. stop enabling yourself yeah and and i think that we we use sickness we use injury i mean the, the artful dodger is literally going to find anything it can it's going to be digging through all of the filing cabinets of your life you know i i see people use their age a lot as an excuse and you know if you're in your 80s obviously you're not going to go run a marathon your first week of doing this challenge not saying it's not possible if you're in your 80s i know a lot of people in their 80s who are very physically fit but you you can still do a 10 minute bar video you can still start the process, you know, because it is quality over quantity anyway, you know. So it's um, it's it's just uh, it's a tricky one, you know. Mm -hmm. People will uh, intentionally. I've seen this happen a lot. They'll intentionally stay up late, blaming that on something else, just so they don't have to get up and practice in the morning because they didn't get enough sleep. Well, who's forcing you to stay up late? In yeah, and, and ask for help too, because, you know, sometimes, especially when you're first getting into this, it, it's good to bounce things off of other people. Um, you know, because sometimes, sometimes you shouldn't practice and you, you should really know the difference between yeah. types of pain, like, like muscle pain and, and soreness and, and ligament and tendon pain and soreness is, is normal and a growing exercise practice that's normal but kinds of pain that like causes like searing shooting hot things like inside your joints like really that is an indication that there is something else that needs to be and you should not push through that yeah. so if you're if you're having if you if you feel like you have an injury and you feel like you're using that as an excuse not to exercise, just bounce it off some, some other people. Ask ask questions, ask for help. Asking for help, group. It, huh? With a signal group. Yeah. And ask yes. in there. Asking for help is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Yeah. And I will say, so when I when my arthritis got really bad around the same time I broke my sacrum, um, my teacher in India put me on a four day a week exercise or uh, practice schedule versus six. Um, so he, he wanted my body to rest two extra days during the week because of what I was going through. So there is, um, and you can always ask, but I, I would definitely, so in like Ashtanga yoga, we say that you're not allowed to have an opinion on the practice for the first 10 years because you're still learning so much and the artful dodger comes in. And so I would say that that's what Emmy's saying is really good advice. Just ask someone. So if something is confusing you, just to make sure it's not the artful dodger, to make sure it's not yourself tripping yourself up, ask. Ask away. You know, ask away. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about this last challenge. A lot of times people will use their kids as an excuse not to do something. And every single person at AYA has children. And they come in every morning. You know, so so instead of, you know, it might be that you do have a child that needs your attention early in the morning and therefore you might have to shift your your practice time to a later time. That's OK. You can do that. But don't don't put that responsibility off on your children or off on someone else, because if it's important to you, you will make time. And yes, and you can you can you can train. I don't want to say train your kids, but it's almost like train. You can train your kids to. Um, respect your time. When I first started um, in my recovery program, uh, one of the disciplines we do is a half an hour of quiet time in the morning. Well, my son was three at the time and a three-year-old needs attention in the morning. And, and I really wanted to devote the time and effort to this program. I really wanted to put the work in because people before me said, if I put the work in, 
I will see change. And I wanted to change. So what I ended up doing was I, he couldn't read yet. So I drew pictures of what he could do. And I put it in a plastic sleeve on my bedroom door. And I taped it to my door when I was in there having quiet time. And it took probably a few weeks of coming to the door when he would have his little meltdown and whatnot and say, buddy, look at this sheet. This is what you can do when mama's in here. I'm going to come out. Don't worry about, I'm going to come out. Okay. And just the repetition, the repetition, the repetition, the repetition, and being willing to be interrupted, being willing to calmly tell him, Hey, no, this is what mama's doing right now. And he got used to it. Yeah. Well, you yeah, proved to him that you're coming back. You proved to him that, that mm-hmm. it will be over and you're coming back. I mean, we have our, we have people that bring their kids into the shala and they sit at the wall and they color while their parents practice. And I know a lot of you in the last challenge, your kids join you. And they were mm-hmm. old enough, they joined you. And that's incredible because you're, and think about this, Emmy. I mean, think about, this just hit me too. It's like, because you, your child was three when you started doing that. Your kids learn by watching you. So what an incredible opportunity for your youngest child to watch you. Oh, yeah. He takes, he goes alone by himself when he's angry because he knows that works. Quiet time works for him. And so he will, about the worst outburst I get, I mean, he yells and makes noise and stuff. And he'll say the worst he says is, as, um, I want alone time. Leave me alone. Okay. All right. Thank you, buddy. You know, you go do you and come back and talk to me when you are able to talk and use your, your normal voice. And that's what he does. And, and I let him have his little outburst because he knows what he can do to go calm himself down. And he goes and takes 10, 15 minutes and he comes back. I'm sorry for being mad at you, mama. It's Can so you imagine cool. the? He's gonna make the best husband and father one day because he had that. I mean, that's what that's what we're we're be the what be the be the change you want to see in the world, right? Like, you know. And so, if your kids are seeing you take time to heal yourselves, guess what they're gonna do? Guess what they're gonna learn how to do? Heal themselves. And and I, I want to make this clear. Your child came to this earth with their own karmic journey, so don't feel like. By me saying that, it means you're screwing your kids up. We all decide to incarnate into human beings to go through our own lessons. And so you are teaching, you are giving your children the tool that they're going to need to go through their own lives. And that's amazing. That's, uh, it's, uh, that's one thing I'm really grateful. My mother was an, my mother exercised a lot growing up. Now, yes, she did have some eating issues, but she taught my sister and me the value of exercise. And yes, this was before I understood that exercise was a modality of healing, but I learned that by watching her. She was on all these tennis teams. I remember sitting at the back of the jazzercise gym, watching her do jazzercise. Like she, I added Richard Simmons back to this baby because that she did. I I remembered watch, watching her doing those Richard. So my mother gave us that. My sister's very active. So even though my sister doesn't do spiritual stuff like we do, she's very active, and it's because I think it really is because we watched our mother do it, and that became. You know, we're using exercise as a way to, to heal your soul. But even if you're just using exercise as a way to make your body healthy, that's the body is where the soul lives. The body is the as the great instigator of the soul in this life. And so even if, you know, your husband and your spouse just views exercise simply as a way to, to, to make their health better, we already know most even like people who are on a spiritual journey know that exercise can relieve stress. And what and so it's just on the very simplest of levels before you get complex into the spiritual stuff, you are just setting such an incredible by taking that time to show your child that you're going to do a 30 minute bar video or you're going to do a half an hour of yoga. Holy shit. Your kid might not like it now, but that's going to leave imp- imprints on them. And when they're in college or when they have whatever happens to them in life, they're gonna be like, you know what? I need to go. I need to go take a yoga class, or I need to go. And it's because you led by example. And so I want to. I want. I really want to reiterate that with everybody because your kids are watching, and so let them 
let them see what it means to be a badass. And it, it takes courage to do this. It takes a lot of courage. Um, I know I wanted to talk a little bit about more about aerobic and anaerobic, but maybe we can do that in a second video the next upcoming week, because I think this is a lot to talk about with the uh, artful dodger and all that kind of stuff. So, and we're, I think we're about in an hour now. So um, we might be over an hour. I never know. I can talk to Emmy all day. So I never know. <laughs> oh, but so guys, so if you have any questions about the artful dodger, let us know in the comment section below. And we will try to help you through that. Again, if you want to join the 60 day challenge, send me an email at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and just put I'm in. And once I get finished editing it up tonight, I will start sending the templates out. Um, I will be putting up, so the evening before the next day, so Friday, this upcoming Friday, January 20th, I will be posting day one of the challenge on, which is Saturday's day. And then Saturday, I'll post Sunday, Sunday, I'll post Monday and so forth. I think the participating challenge will, will also be doing that. So you'll also have a reference point from our YouTube channels. Um, last challenge, I did daily videos. I'm not going to be doing daily videos this challenge because it's 60 days. So it's a lot. So I'll probably do be doing weekly updates or every few days. Uh, Emmy will be back on. We'll be talking about the subjects that we're talking about that week to give you guys kind of a feat to help you work through it, all that kind of stuff. So is there anything you want to end with, Emmy? Um, oh, the, the very first day of the challenge is the very first um, group Reiki session. It's on the new moon. It's on January 21st, Saturday, January 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm going to create a Zoom link and um, I can share it with, should should I create all the Zoom links and put them in the ones if that we're If you gonna... want, send it to me. Uh, yeah, just create the Zoom links and email it to me before and before tonight. And I'll put out, whoops, I'll add it to the template. Okay. Sure. And then, yeah, and then I'll, I'll also post the, I'm also going to post the Zoom link on my social medias and um, my YouTube community page and in the Signal group as well, just to, to give people a, because I think I might create um, a separate group for people who are interested in doing the group Reiki. So I have a centralized place to keep it organized. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and the theme for, for this new moon is, is our one word mantra for the year. And then we're going to do a guided um, meditation and Reiki healing to embody that. Um, so bring your journals. Cause I'm going to have a couple of journal uh, journaling prompts for you to, to guide you to your one word. You know, everyone, everyone's going to have a different word. I mean, some of us might have the same word. I've already picked mine. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful, very helpful um, exercise, and I think that it would it would really be beneficial for people to to do this. And it just so happened that it fell on the first day. Like this challenge it's is all, it's all divine. It's all divine. It's all divine timing. It's all yeah. Divine. All right. So Emmy will set up those Zoom links. She'll send them to me. I'll add them to the template. So you have the Zoom link on the template, and I'll also put it on my community tab as well. So you can also just click from there too. Um, and these are all great tools. There's a lot in this challenge guys. And so a lot, I said, Emmy, like I said, Emmy contributed a lot to this challenge. So did Shanti. We're all here to help you. So don't, don't ever reach out for help if you need it. And these group shares with Reiki with Emmy are, are going to be an incredible way to get that support. Um, also the signal group is a great way to get support. Um, before we end, I'm just going to say one thing that Sri Swami Satyananda says in his commentary, the yoga sutra is if you're still trying to figure out the ego as clinging onto identity and separating it from the soul. So you have a better understanding. And I think this is really what Sri Swami Satyananda recommends. Start changing your vocabulary. Like when you're tired, instead of saying, I'm tired, say, my body's tired. Mm. When you're hungry, my body's hungry. When you're sad, my mind is sad. When you're happy, my mind is happy. And so you start to understand that these experiences on a very subtle level are all just created experiences for your soul to know itself because your soul is that fractal of God that is always pure consciousness and pure love. Exactly. And it can't be harmed. The essence of who you are cannot be harmed. So when, when we're stuck on identifying with pain, identifying with hurt, identifying with things that people have done to us, and, and we hyper focus on those things and we create more and more and more hurt, like what my body did with the PTSD. I was putting an experience from the past 
and an overlay on top of the present when it was literally nothing. Nothing. That that was so profound. I am still like... Just shows you how clever that freaking ego is. <laughs> very, very clever. Very clever. So long as we're in a human body, we will be having to work on the identifications that we have. I love that definition of ego. I do too. I really I do too. Um, and just know that, I mean, that's, you're never going to transcend your ego. The minute you transcend your ego is when you die. Mm -hmm. And you leave this ego behind and guess what happens? Guess what happens? Get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And, and it's just, it's, that's why I love how Ram Dass just says, see, everything is interesting. Oh, what happened to Emmy? Interesting. Interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. So interesting. And that's what happened. What happened to me? But mine wasn't as, as dramatic as Emmy this week with the whole TV show. But I was, I was, I thought it was hysterical once I realized what had happened. I was like, well, I'm a dumbass. Like, okay, you got me on that one, you artful dodger. You got me on that one. Like, <laughs> I'll give you that. Like, that was, that was really clever. That was so clever. <laughs> so, you know, but all right, guys. Well, we love you all. You guys can do it. This is amazing. I'm so excited to see the feedback, to see what happens to each and every one of you personally over these 60 days and collectively over these 60 days, you are the storm. There is nobody that can save you. You have to save yourself, which is so powerful. That's so powerful. So, all right, you guys, we love you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody. Bye.